G'day YouTube, Shazby Bookow here. Today we're finally going to do a walk around my teardrop camper. I'd also like to give a shout out to Chris and Siggy from Just In Case Solar Power and Bush Camping. I'm finally doing it. <laughs> Today we're going to start at the hitch end. I'll walk you back through past the toolbox, the cabin, kitchen and the awning. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to have to undo the alarm, disarm it so that we can do our walk around. So obviously I've got a hitching ball socket, I've got the power for the lights here, gets plugged in, and safety chain, of course, there. Originally, the nipper came with a 6 inch jockey wheel. I changed it out to a 10 inch jockey wheel and then had to change it out to, and install this one with the ratchet. I'll show you a picture of our land and there's a slight declining slope and I needed to have something that I could put a brake on and that's what this system has here. Sammy, move out of the way for a sec. I can put it into a position and lock it so that it won't roll away, get away from me because at um, half a tonne about 500 kilos. It's a little bit heavier than I can sometimes manage on my own. I opted to get the spare tyre and these are 15 inch rims. I've got the toolbox. I'll grab the keys and unlock it and we'll have a look at what's inside the toolbox. So the toolbox is there. It's a really good toolbox. I like it. It's got the battery box for the solar system that's on the roof and we'll climb up and get some shots of that as well. I keep a box of wood, it's getting cold now. Never know when you might want to have a fire. I've got a shovel in there. This is the working mechanism, the handle that goes in here when I want to move it around and it lives, lives in there too. Okay, so that's my front end. Take a bit of a walk around and then we'll talk about some other details. I'll just do it from a distance so I can get the whole thing in. That's the kitchen, we'll get to that. It's three. I'll get the doors open and we can have a look inside. So it's got a screen door and then a security door. So if I want to I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this one handed. Nope, not going to be able to do this one handed. Alright, hang on a tick. So I've got the, got the security door, 
and screen door. So the security door can be bungeed so that if it's windy it'll stay in place and I can still lock the screen door. Alright, we'll get ready to take another look inside. So I made some curtains myself. This is actually the back of the print, but you get the idea. It's native animals, so I made one for each door. This one there. I made one for each of the smaller windows. And on the back window, I found for five dollars in the remnant tray a little bit of a cafe curtain that fits exactly fine. Just a sec. So all I did to attach these was put in little eye hooks and little hooks and the spring wire with the rubberized seal. And that's it. I'll show you how the window works. Got locks and the handle. And there's a screen on here. So during the nights I usually have this window open at least to have some air coming in while I'm asleep. Unless it's really hot then I will sleep with the screen door locked in place. And this is my first little bit of artwork that I bought. Beautiful little tree of life. Hangs here all the time. It's nice. Alright, I'll get this closed up and we'll have a look at the bed. So the bed is memory foam, very comfortable and I've just got myself a really good Coleman ball drive fleecy lined sleeping bag that I have in here and because I can't fit this in the washing machine I have a sheet liner that I've put in there and um, I actually sleep with my head up this end I like it against the kitchen board there that's where my 12 volt power outlet is there and I'll put my phone on charge and leave it sitting up on the bench there. The headboard end is actually this end here where it's got the light but I prefer to sleep the other way around and I'm not the only one with a teardrop that does that. I found myself a little three drawer unit in the reject shop. I've just got it sitting on a rubber mat here so that it won't um, wreck the bed too much and that's where I keep sort of stuff that I need in there all the time. I'll jump back in and we'll have a look. Alright, we'll lift the lid and have a look inside the kitchen. So it's on struts and I keep this one which is plates and wipes and chopping boards and things not food related lives in here and when I pull this out you'll see the setup of the kitchen but I've also got other pictures where I've actually got it set up and on this side we'll pop this one up is the battery monitoring system and I pretty much don't have to do anything I do check um, and it seems to just sit at 
The nipper does live outside, so she's constantly sitting in the sun. So her solar panel is constantly getting feed power in. All right, and you can probably see the runners for the kitchen sliding out. And we'll have a look at that outside. I don't generally access this from the inside, but the option is there if I pulled up at a camping site and I was alone and I didn't feel safe, I can lock myself away inside the nipper and make myself a cup of tea or dinner. I haven't had the need to do that yet, so I've been pretty lucky. I love having the window. This was what I like about the square back teardrop is that it is light in here whereas when I looked at a lot of the teardrops with the kitchen unit in the back I kind of felt was um, a really dark space so that's my little home away from home I might turn the light out now and we'll go open up the kitchen and have a look Okay, so I did get it to come out and stay in place. I was being too gentle with it. I'll just show you how it opens up. So obviously it's got a little latch here that you undo. And then that goes down. So it's like a working space. There's one on this side as well. So could also probably eat there as well. I don't have my own table. And then we'll just take this out of here. And it usually lives it usually lives about there. And then my um, breakfast box I put there that's got the stove and coffee and cups and things like that in it, cutlery. And then I take the stove out and I'll put that all there with the coffee and the cups and that stays in there while we're out and then pack it all away as we're coming home for the drive because you don't want things rattling around of course and it works fine for me and of course this creates a bit of a, a wind shelter for when you're cooking I just use a hiking stove and I also use another um, large gas bottle on the ground with a single hot plate or the fire and my cast iron cookware so it just depends on the situation but yep that's the kitchen the kitchen has a light a really good one and hang on I'll come around the other side I'm not sure what you can see Which is there, and I can check the battery through here. Last but not least is the Wanderer Aero Arm Awning, which Hubby helped me install, and I've got pictures of that out. I'm not going to take it out. It's a bit windy at the moment, anyway. So I'm just going to put some pictures up and talk you through the pics. Alright, I'm going to lock her up and go edit some video. The Wanderer Aero Arm Awning has L-shaped brackets that you slide along a channel to suit your roof racks. We then had to source U-bolt brackets from Bunnings to secure the L-shaped brackets to the roof racks. The first time I used the awning, it was pretty straightforward to pitch. I'll pop a link to the BCF Wanderer Aero Arm video below. I started using tarps in various configurations for sun and weather protection. I'm really proud of my first reverse park at Moria.
This storm at Jindabyne is where I had to start propping up the awning for a good rain runoff. I've started using an LD privacy screen and a 2.5 metre front wall that makes a great side wall. Hope you enjoyed our walk around the Nipper Teardrop and I'm pretty sure our cat Sam thinks he owns the Nipper.